It has now been three days since the Super Bowl game, and I am here in Buffalo, New York, and I will attempt to cheer up the people here. I am a trained professional comedian. I wish I was a trained professional psychiatrist. And so everyone, join hands. Please, join hands, will you please? Quickly, join hands. Repeat after me loud and clear. Repeat after me. We are not depressed. We are not depressed. Football is not important. What is important is the game of life. So with peace in our hearts, we extend to Dallas our middle finger. Live from Buffalo, New York, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Russell. These are the barroom buzzers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, lad. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I feel your pain. Now, we... Uh, no, we're going to get off of football. We turn now to a sport that is friendlier and more wholesome, Olympic figure skating. Now, <laughs> I have never seen a story uh, that captures the opinions of Americans more, more than politics. This is Tanya Harding's story. People feel very, very strongly. How about, you, with your applause, how many think that Tanya Harding should be allowed to participate in the Olympics? Well, should be allowed. Uh -huh. How many think should not be allowed, should not be allowed? How many think the only thing that Tanya Harding is guilty of is marrying a no-account weasel? <laughs> These are really hot-button stories. Uh, the other one going on, people are very visceral about opening up trade with Vietnam. How do you feel about that? Vietnam veterans understandably bothered by this. How many think we, we should open up a trade with Vietnam? Should we try? Very reasonable. How many say we should not, should not trade with Vietnam? I'll tell you this, we go down that road and start trading with Vietnam, the next thing you know, we'll be trading with Red China, and then where will we be? I ask you that. Well, Congress is back now. They got back to Washington last week for a grueling three-week session before the Washington birthday holiday. Actually, they don't call it a holiday. It is a home district work period. Don't you love that? <laughs> home district work period, right. Go down to Boca Raton, Florida, and hope that the waitress is not Bob Dole in drag. <laughs> Now, the two big items on Congress's agenda are the health care plan and welfare reform, which makes sense. Because by this time next year, many of the congressmen who voted for the health care plan will be on welfare. And they, they're very disturbed by that commercial that the insurance companies have running. You know, the husband and wife, there ought to be a better way. Have you seen that one? Look here, dear. It says that if the health care passes, there will be a plague of locusts, and we'll all get rickets. <laughs> there ought to be a better way. Well, the president is plagued by glitches such as the recent unsuccessful nominee uh, to be Secretary of Defense, Bobby Ray Inman. The man had the job. He was a shoe-in, and then for some strange reason, Bobby Ray Inman holds this bizarre press conference in which he did a great impersonation of Captain Queeg in the Cane Mutiny, rubbing those two steel marbles together. <laughs> Made me wonder if he had all of his marbles at the time, <laughs> citing dark and evil forces in the beyond, threats from Bob Dole. Can you imagine Secretary of Defense Bobby Ray Inman ordering you two spy flights over Kansas, dark and dreary <laughs> forces? There are good things in the news when NASA a few weeks ago sent the astronauts up there and repaired the Hubble telescope. That was terrific. NASA's on a tighter budget. They sent up a guy from Pearl Vision Center. <laughs> Lenses back in about an hour. <laughs> I like the spacewalk. Uh, 
when this was going on on a Sunday and I was watching the spacewalk and of course when the astronauts are weightless their movements are very slow and plodding and painstaking and then I realized I was watching a Redskins game <laughs> then we had the president's surgeon general Joycelyn Elders a month or so ago made a speech at the National Press Club in Washington in which she hinted that maybe we ought to take a look at legalizing drugs. Well, immediately the White House came out with a clarification said she was not referring to inhaling. And of course, <laughs> for a Democratic Surgeon General to even hint about legalizing drugs was a gift to the Republicans. The Republicans could have been happier if she had delivered the eulogy at the funeral of Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar. <laughs> the Republicans could have been happier if Bill Clinton's brother Roger Clinton had turned up as the lead singer in Michael Jackson's backup band. <laughs> they could have been happier... I have one more of these. They could have been happier... They could have been happier if Secretary of State Warren Christopher had been spotted shopping at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> for himself. <laughs> Dark and evil forces. These are a hot button where we learned back in the 50s the government have subjected people to radiation tests. They didn't know about it. They were unwilling. There were children and people in hospitals subjected by our government to radiation tests. That was back in the Cold War. Remember the Cold War when we feared nuclear radiation from another country? Well, it was a country, all right, the United States. And so paraphrasing Pogo, we have met the Gestapo, and it was us, all these evil forces. And yet a good thing in the news where the Congress passed the Brady Bill, defying the National Rifle Association, and immediately the NRA came out against the seven-day waiting period for the purchase of a senator. And also President Clinton. <laughs> President Clinton bothered by the evil forces of his past. Lurking ghosts of womanizing. Recently some culprits snuck onto the grounds of the White House and they put a bumper sticker on the President's limousine. It said, don't come a-knockin' if this van's a-rockin'. <laughs> Chili, as we are romance with a song and a dance. So waltz us around again. Really, yeah. very good. Well, we have some new lyrics from last year. Defense budgets must never decrease. Global threats are unlikely to cease. From Iran to Iraq, North Korea and back. Most of all, Arkansas State Police. Everyone, I, 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 I. In China, they never reach chilly. As we are romance with a song and a dance, with tales out of school about Willie. A vendetta prevailed down there. Bill soon had these rumors to bear. What caused the cops' action? Some minor infraction? Were they mad because Bill wouldn't share? Everyone, I, 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 in China, they never reach chilly. As we are romance with a song and a dance, with tales out of school about Willie. As the governor, Bill had many fans. On his time, there were many demands. For eight years throughout, which worked out to about 2010 one night stands. It's unlikely that governors flirt. Picture Cuomo chasing a skirt. <laughs> Take a little more time. <laughs> Bite your tongue, sir, if you knew a cruising Sununu <laughs> with the radar on bimbo alert. With the radar on bimbo alert. Thank you. Let me be a little bit charitable toward President Clinton for a moment. A month or so ago, when these stories started coming out of, of Little Rock about the, uh, the womanizing way in the past, at that time, I had just seen the movie Schindler's List, uh, the story of Oscar Schindler, 
who was responsible for saving the lives of over a thousand Jews in Europe during World War II. And they establish in the movie and in the book that Oscar Schindler uh, had been a uh, flagrant womanizer, a, a quite a, a, a philanderer. And I thought, I think the lesson to be learned here, and then he went on to do this heroic uh, humanitarian deed, and I thought the lesson to be learned was if you want to get a job done, and you have your choice between a saint and a sinner, you got to go with the sinner. I mean, the sinner will work harder to make up for his past sins. Not putting too fine a moral point on this, but a sinner is obligated to amend his ways, and that is why my nominee to be Secretary of Defense is Senator Bob Packwood, my friends, and that's why I do. <laughs> All right, so what is this, <laughs> what is this whitewater thing all about? Well, uh, whitewater is a piece of investment property in Arkansas that the Clintons had a piece of, and it was financed by the prominent local bank down there, belly up savings and loans. <laughs> then you have Madison Guarantee, that is simply belly up savings and loans, old name, and the birthplace of the original Clinton economic plan. Now, the Clintons have caved to the opposition and they have agreed to form a special prosecutor. What they should, they should have named a special prosecutor Lawrence Walsh of Iran-Contra fame because he would have taken seven years to come out with this report and by then Clinton would have been gone and we'd all forgotten about it. Because Walt is just now coming out with his report on Iran-Contra, for heaven's sakes, which took place, what, in 1927? <laughs> we are 114 scandals away from that. We're all on sleaze overload, and when you ask the average person what Iran-Contra was all about, they say, well, Iran-Contra, what's it about? Let's see, Iran-Contra. Uh, uh, Oliver North, hmm? and G. Gordon Liddy <laughs> drove a tank through a Nicaraguan restaurant in Miami <laughs> while the Arkansas State Police looked the other way. <laughs> CIA Director William Casey personally bugged Democratic headquarters disguised as a potted plant. <laughs> President Ronald Reagan said he didn't know anything about any of it, saying he was away making the movie Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Oliver North lied to Congress, shredded government evidence, and accepted an illegal gratuity, all of which makes him overqualified for the job he now seeks. <laughs> United States Senator. You know, there's a lot of this going around. You know who wants to be mayor of Washington, D.C.? Hmm? The former mayor. Mary and Barry, it looks as if he's going to take another crack at the job. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> Slipped that one right by you, didn't I? Uh, and so between Mary and Barry running again and Oliver North, it, it's starting to look as if politics is some form of court ordered community service. You know? <laughs> now, None of these stories I've discussed so far tonight constitute the lead story out of Washington, none of them. The number one story, the story that most captured the public's attention in recent weeks took place 30 miles outside of Washington in the little town of Manassas, Virginia. <laughs> and the trial of Lorena Bobbitt. Now, I hate that story. I never touched it. For six months, I never mentioned that up here. Did I ever discuss that story? But to ignore the Lorena Bobbitt story now would be a, like ignoring a dead elephant in my living room. And so <laughs> I would like to discuss this story on a higher level. <laughs> we are PBS, and so I would like to discuss it on a more intellectual level. <laughs> Bob it goes bob bob bobbing along along she was not convicted for the wound inflicted he done her wrong no no not so she will go free six weeks in some observatory no sweat is was insanity
Lucy a slap on the wrist as if she had missed. We will all remember that famous member for years to come. How the press belabored Lorena's saber till we were numb. John was disconnected and politically corrected what's right and what's wrong. When Lorena Bobbitt goes bob, bob, bobbin', she was bobbin' while he was throbbing. When Lorena Bobbitt goes bob, bob, bobbin' along. Not guilty by reason of insanity. Does that sound familiar? That's the famous verdict from the trial of John Hinckley. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't they make interesting cellmates? <laughs> Especially if Lorena showed up wearing a Ronald Reagan button. <laughs> why did the press, why did the media hammer away at that story the way they did? Doesn't the media know that there isn't an awful lot of that particular crime going around? I mean, this, the media never studied that in Journalism 101. They, they, this is new ground. Oh, yes, we have our penal codes. But the point is... <laughs> and so all those journalists could do was to follow the traditional code of journalism and only ask the questions, who, when, where, why, and she did what? <laughs> All right. Let us move on. The two Nobel Peace Prizes last year were awarded to the two South African leaders Nelson Mandela and F.W. de Klerk. At the press conference, Mandela called de Klerk a man of vision, and de Klerk said that Mandela always kept his cell nice and clean. <laughs> we continue to be jittery about North Korea's alleged nuclear bomb. We have laid down the law to North Korea under no uncertain terms. We said, you will never develop a nuclear bomb as long as we have anything to say about it, and we know where you keep it. <laughs> Great Britain's Prime Minister John Minor, John Major, in the uh, <laughs> closing weeks of last year, established indirect communications with the Irish Republican Army in hope, we hope, to put an end to the violence between the Catholics and the Protestants in Northern Ireland. Each side believes that God is with them. The Catholics think that God is on their side. The Protestants think that God is on their side. Meanwhile, God was busy celebrating Hanukkah. <laughs> Now, the past couple of days, Gary Adams, the leader of Sinn Féin, the political arm of the Irish Republican Army, was granted a visa. British are very upset about this, and uh, he was allowed to come into this country, confined in New York City, Gary Adams, for 48 hours. Well, the British were hoping he'd use the subway. Um, <laughs> a few weeks ago, President Clinton went, went to Russia. He met with Boris Yeltsin, and they came up with an ingenious plan. It was so simple. We're not going to aim our missiles at each other. <laughs> I think we're talking Nobel Peace Prize here. I mean, <laughs> why did they think of that years ago? We're not going to aim our missiles at Russia. Russia will not aim their missiles at us. Meanwhile, everybody else in Europe is running under the table. <laughs> Clinton went to Geneva, and he met with President Assad. He's the president of our traditional ally, Syria. Syria is on the State Department list of terrorist nations, so this is the first time Bill Clinton has met with a known cutthroat since he had lunch last month with Bob Dole. <laughs> All of the former communist nations want membership in the NATO club. They all want to jump aboard NATO. NATO has laid down guidelines for membership. All former communist nations must order their spies to sell their condominiums in Florida and return home. <laughs> All former communist nations wishing to bomb each other's cities must get permission from the Serbian Human Rights Commission. <laughs> All former Russian republics wishing to join NATO must display a common flag, a simple piece of white cloth, best used to stuff into the mouth of the emerging Russian fruitcake, Vladimir Zhiranovsky. <laughs> you 
know about him, Vladimir Zhirinovsky. His party captured a great big lead in the parliament, and he is Boris Yeltsin's worst nightmare. Zhirinovsky, he wants us to give back Alaska. He wants to bomb Japan. <laughs> um, <laughs> throw a big grin. Zhirinovsky, Zhirinovsky, you are quoted. That you'd bomb Japan, how is that how you feel? Do you really want us to give back Alaska? Would you settle for New Jersey? It's a deal. You are bad news, you are racist, you are poison. And I mean that in the nicest way, it's true. Now I don't mean to sound like a critic, but you're half Jewish and anti-Semitic. If you mess with those nukes, Zhirinovsky, as Nikita Khrushchev said, we'll bury you. Zhirinovsky, Zhirinovsky, do you stand for a return to Joseph Stalin, freedom's foe? You want journalists to be tongue-tied, TV anchors, blonde and blue-eyed. Are you warm? Are you real, Zhirinovsky? Or to the Russians, just another Ross Perot? That was a, uh, did you recognize that song? That was a parody on the song Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, that's, that's the way it worked out. That, uh, that's what a parody is. You take a song and you change the words. Uh, I, Mona Lisa is a beautiful song. Did I denigrate the song Mona Lisa in any way at all? Great old standard made popular by Nat King Cole. A lovely, lovely song. Now the Supreme Court is taking up a case that would make parodies Illegal. People say, are you serious? Yes, I am serious. I'm involved in a Supreme Court case uh, about the writing of, uh, of parodies. They're, they're gonna, they've already heard the case, and they're going to decide it uh, very soon. I think it's the most serious issue the Supreme Court will take up this year. I don't have to tell you, my friends. <laughs> parodies are a growing menace in this country. People are afraid to go out of their homes at night for fear that somebody's going to sneak up behind them and sing them a parody. I don't have to tell you this. <laughs> Children are bringing parodies into the classroom. I myself have been in parody writer's rehab for many years <laughs> since the police discovered parody paraphernalia in my apartment. <laughs> the word on the street is, change a line, do the time. <laughs> received an idea for a parody uh, the other day by a man I really revere. He is the dean, he is the godfather of all of the political cartoonists, Herb Block of the Washington Post. Herb Block. He called me. I was thrilled. He said, I have an idea for a song for you. I said, great. What's, what's the song about? He said, well, you know that the Vatican just opened up diplomatic relations with Israel. I said, yeah. He said, well, you could do a song called they're beginning to look a lot like Christians. <laughs> so here we go. They're beginning to look a lot like Christians. Everywhere you go, Israel was surprised to be finally recognized, and it only took them 40 years or so. They're beginning to look a lot like Christians. Plain to one and all. Everyone on Christmas Eve singing carols in Tel Aviv, and there's Santa Claus. He's at the Wailing Wall. <laughs> Diplomatic relations with Israelis. Better late than not. There's a menorah for all to see at the Vatican Embassy. As the Pope picked up his cue from Arafat, does the Vatican have a new agenda? Remaining to be seen to recognize the chosen ones with Havana Gila sung by nuns. <laughs> exactly what was meant, give up the Golden Heights for Lent? I hope they never stress it. Bingo in the Knesset, will they raffle off Rabin? Will they raffle off Rabin? Thank you. And thank you, Herblock. Now, uh, stay tuned in some of your cities there for the Mark Russell.
a great Alaska trek. Check your local listings. It'll be on in a couple of days. Washington, it's on immediately following this show. So I hope you like it. Uh, you'll see the Alaska show with the death-defying midlife crisis piano drop onto the glacier. Well, the piano took a licking but kept on clinking. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. continue tomorrow night when we go along on Mark Russell's Great Alaska Trek. Mush time is 9 p.m. The Mark Russell Comedy Special was produced by WNED Buffalo, which is solely responsible for its content. Funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and annual financial support from viewers like you. For an audio cassette of tonight's program, send a check or money order to Mark Russell, program number 1901, box 4000, Buffalo, New York, 14240. Please do not send cash. Allow six weeks for delivery.